Hello, hello everyone. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, it's uh, such. It's been such a great conference till now. Uh, I hope you enjoyed all the all the talks and um, uh, yeah, the the get arounds and all that. Um, so we will talk about Apache Lucene. Um, just out of curiosity, are there any Apache Lucene commuters in the in the room? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, thanks for everything you do. Uh, so who works with uh, Solar, Elasticsearch, OpenSearch, so Apache Lucene in some way or another? OK, that's quite the great majority of this, of this audience. Um, so who works with other search technologies and so you want to discover Apache Lucene? OK, a few, a few people, yeah. Um, yeah, so Apache Lucene is a ultra-fast search technology uh, with proven search capabilities, um, with a great and vibrant community. Um, and what's interesting about Apache Lucene, and this is the subject of this talk, is that uh, Lucene was first incubated as an Apache project in 2001, in September 2001. So that's 22 years, nine months, and counting. So that's, that's a long journey, uh, actually, and especially for a technology today. Um, I'm sure that you like, use technologies, and oh, maybe the vast majority of technologies that you're using in your projects today are have less than five years. And uh, yeah, you see technologies that come and go, technologies that, that, were, that were really trendy, like a few years ago, they, they are no longer anymore, and, and so on. But what's like interesting and, and uh, really like impressing with Apache Lucene is that uh, the community is still there, it's still vibrant, and it's a technology that evolves and didn't stop evolving since 2001. Um, so, uh, looking back, these, these are some, some extracts from Twitter uh, that talk about Apache Lucene. Um, by the way, Twitter uses Apache Lucene underneath for their search. Uh, they were also a contributor in the beginning, and then uh, they so come some, somehow forked Apache Lucene for internal use. I, I, I think there are a lot of use cases like that, a lot of, a lot of companies that do that. Um, but what we can see uh, throughout the, the time, so this starts in 2011, because in 2001 Twitter didn't exist, um, but you can see like improvements, performance improvements, memory improvements, all the time. I mean, it's, it's all the time the same, the same story, and it's all the time, I mean, most of the times, really impressive. Um, this first tweet here talks about 100 times faster. So yeah, it's 100 times faster for a certain type of queries, but you have like improves, improvements like this that regularly arrive in, in Apache Lucene. And you also have Apache Lucene that um, is the library that found the most bugs in the JVM. So the JVMs that arrive, so you have 17, 21 now. Um, yeah, Apache Lucene was using the JVM so hard, so extensively, that it was, I mean, the... the technology that found a lot of bugs there. <clears throat> um, so if you're familiar with buzzwords, uh, you have certainly saw that Apache Lucene is present since a long time. Uh, we were used to have these talks uh, every year, like, uh, yeah, what's new in Apache Lucene, or how many bugs Apache Lucene did Apache Lucene find this year in, in the JVM, uh, and, and so on. And I will, I'm, I'm ready to bet that uh, like 
when Apache Lucene will turn 30, uh, we will still have a talk on Apache Lucene here at, at this conference. Maybe from Uwe, maybe from someone else, but Apache Lucene I, will still be here. Um, so, no logos here, but I'm sure you can recognize these technologies. Uh, the, yeah, the secret of Apache Lucene is that it's a, it's a core technology that can be integrated very easily and uh, that is integrated into a lot of software. And as I said, also integrated in companies, so like Twitter, LinkedIn, use Apache Lucene underneath. Um, and um, so, yeah, you have Apache Lucene that powered Apache Notch, which is a technology that you don't hear anymore, uh, but it's, uh, it's a technology that was the, the, let's say, the first version of Hadoop that you most, most certainly know. Uh, Apache Lucene is integrated into Apache Solar, and for some time they were uh, like merged into the same repository. Uh, Apache Solar started in 2005. Uh, Elasticsearch, of course, that like took Apache Lucene to another level, to the to the distributed and big data use cases. And um, you also have technologies like uh, MongoDB that integrated Apache Lucene to build full text search capabilities. Capabilities, and this is this is new. I mean, it's not like Apache Lucene is, is an old, techno old technology that's integrated into a lot of software that's running, and and that's it. It's it's actually like new technologies that make the choice of integrating Apache Lucene into their technology uh, today to build to build the search for search capabilities. So this choice of MongoDB was made uh, like two years ago and uh, they chose Apache Lucene. And yeah, of course, you also have OpenSearch, uh, which are also the main sponsor this year. And as I said, a lot of enterprise software that are based on Apache Lucene. Uh, and I didn't introduce myself, so uh, we actually also build a software on, based on Apache Lucene, which is called A2. Uh, which is a vertical for e-commerce, and uh, we also have a um, software as a service uh, um, version of it, which called which is called All Site, which is supposed to be a collaborative search engine. Yeah, you can go ahead and try it. It's All Site, um, and yeah, we do a lot of uh, consulting, training, and uh, um, expertise on on everything around OpenSearch, Solar, and Elasticsearch. Um, so how did it start? Uh, at first, there was the inverted index. So this is actually the, 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 the very first version of Apache Lucene, and it's, it's not that complex. Just, yeah, uh, you're, I mean, for those that are uh, familiar with Apache Lucene, they, of course, you know how it works. But just to see where we started. Um, I have here in this example three um, um, three uh, documents that are just phrases, and uh, the journey of these documents before the the inverted index is is like this. So we have you have at first the tokenization, and this phase is also like present today with all the new machine learning use cases that we see. So this is the, we extract the words. So actually these are not words, these are tokens. But as a simplification, we say they are words. We then sort these words in alphabetical order, and we remove also the, um, the, the duplicates. And then we just list, list them. And there, there you have it. This is, this is Apache Lucene version zero. You have a, the inverted index. So you have all the words that you had in your documents that are just listed. And then they point to the documents that they were first uh, found in. Um, as a matter of fact, it's a little bit more complex than this. 
because you have also the text analysis, which is also something that's like in the low-level architecture of Lucene. And the terms, the tokens, are not placed in the index as they are, but they go through a um, transformation that's called text analysis. So we could do, for example, lowercase to remove the capitals. As you can see, you have like uh, letters that are like registrations with capital R, they with capital T, um, and, and so on. So um, you can also have uh, things like uh, synonyms that are uh, expanded. Uh, you can also have uh, like stop words that are removed because they uh, point to a lot of documents and so on. And you end up with something like this, which is actually something that uh, uh, you can, it's, it's an exercise that you, you can also give to, to a student uh, as, a, as a homework or to, to a candidate that comes to, to applies for a job in your company. So yeah, this is the, the first invert inverted index. So the algorithm is really, really simple. Um, now, the power of this structure um, is that it works, works really great for everything that's lexical search. It's when you search for a word, uh, it, I mean, this word is found, the documents that correspond to this word is found, is found immediately. Because it's an inverted index, you know where the, the word is, is, is found because they are sorted alphabetically. And then the word points to the documents that are, that are attached to it. Um, if you search for another word, you have another set of documents, and this structure is also very optimized for everything that's Boolean queries, like disjunctions and conjunctions. Uh, for example, for a AND query that searches for two words, you have um, just to search for the first one, search for the second one, and then do the conjunction of these, these responsive responses. So very efficient structure for that. Um, in reality, the, it, it, it was like uh, enriched very quickly with uh, uh, metadata and stuff like that, in order that you can, so you can do like phrase um, searches and all that. And it ends up with this syntax for, for searching, and it's a syntax that's still like valid today and still used today. It's even like uh, present in, in Kibana, for example, if you're using it. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, simple and powerful. You can search for uh, words in, in fields. You can search for uh, words with um, wildcards. You can search for uh, approximations, what we call the fuzzy search. Uh, you can also search for phrases when you quote a, a group of words. And you have also some other features that uh, were actually added uh, afterwards later, so like dates and numbers. Now, why is it, is it that fast? Um, well, actually, the index is created with a purpose in mind, which is how will I use the index at search time? So when you place tokens in the inverted index, you actually think of what the user will search when they, uh, when they will uh, uh, use the, the search service. So you have a transformation that is done at index time that you see on the left, and the same transformation, the same text analysis that is done at query time. And this is why in the index we placed, we placed lowercase documents and um, we also like remove accents and stuff like that. This is an example of auto-completion, which is still incredibly fast. And uh, uh, the, the auto-completion is implemented like this, uh, with, uh, with this transformation that's called an edge, uh, edge engram or engram. Um, and uh, you actually will store 
in the inverted index, every beginning of, of every word. So if you have a word like in this case, Celine, uh, after removing the accents, putting it to lowercase, and all the other transformations that you might need, synonyms, etc., stemming, uh, you will actually cut the word into smaller tokens that represent actually what the user will eventually type in the, in the search bar. So for this simple word, which is Celine, uh, six letters, you will have actually um, one, two, three, four, five tokens in the index if you start at two characters. And this, this can look like huge. You say, oh, but the inverted index is, it's, it will really be huge because I'm indexing like every, every particle of the, of the word, and, and it is. But uh, Lucene added a compression of the, of the index. So uh, if you take a text file that you want to make searchable, uh, the index, the Lucene index, will have more or less the same size. But it contains a lot of data structures behind the, behind the scenes. But it's, it's compressed. So yeah, you don't need to like, pay attention to the volume that you're sending to, to Apache Lucene. It's, it's really optimized for that. And yeah, so with, with this kind of structure, of course, when someone searches for just two letters or three letters, the response is found almost immediately. And you also have some variations on that in this case. So you noticed the difference here. So the, by default at query time, the same transformation is done. This is done by the, the application that's above Apache Lucene. But you can also like choose not to do the same transformation, and you have different uh, behaviors uh, of your search. And by the way, so as I like cited some software that use Apache Lucene. This is a screenshot so from, from Solar, from Apache Solar, that actually has a, a pretty nice interface that, uh, that will uh, show how the text is analyzed and how the text is um, stored in the index. Uh, it's really great to, like, to debug and understand how, what's happening behind the scenes. Um, I was mentioning that tweet that uh, said that Apache Lucene was 100 times faster uh, for a certain type of queries. And actually, it was this, this feature that, that came into, into Apache Lucene that was actually the, the basis of a lot of improvements back then. Um, so um, the first implementation of this was for uh, what we call uh, the fuzzy search. So the, the, the search where you like, can make mistakes, and the search term that you're searching is not exactly the one that's in the index. And you imagine that with the structure that you saw previously, in order to implement that, you have to scan a large part of the index. And then uh, these uh, FSA and FSTs came, and they were a really a rev revolution. Uh, they allowed to uh, search 100 times faster because actually the, all the combinations of a word uh, were stored somehow in an index in, we, in, these, in these trees. So this is the representation of the word dog, dogs at plural, in plural. And it's a huge structure just for a small, small word, but it's the price to pay to be fast at search time. So of course, the index increased, the index size increased, and all that, but the searches were 100 times faster. Um, and the story of the, the implementation of this feature is, is quite like, amazing. Uh, the Lucene committers actually like took the bytecode of a code that was implemented in, the, in another language, and um, they actually transformed the, the bytecode in Java, and they, they just like, stick to that because the, the code was really complex to, to, uh, to understand. So the, the original code was from a PhD um, 
document that, that had like 60 pages. Uh, yeah, so 100 times faster for fuzzy queries, but also the synonym filter that was uh, five times five time faster and used a lot less RAM, uh, and, and so on. So a lot of improvements came out of, out of this new structure that was added to the uh, Lucene index. And then came numbers. So as funny as it may appear, um, Lucene didn't handle numbers well. It was a library that was optimized for full text search. Everything was text uh, in Apache Lucene. And even a, a simple thing as a, as a price uh, in, 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 a, in an index was difficult to index. So for example, if you needed to sort by price, you needed actually to pad the, the string of characters with zero in order to, to, to be able to have the, the, the sorting in the correct manner. Uh, yeah, this feature came because Lepache Lucene was used a lot in e-commerce, and yeah, actually you have numbers in e-commerce. So we moved slightly from full text search to something more, a little bit more structured. And this was also a revolution because it allowed a lot of things that we will see afterwards um, from all the observability and monitoring use cases. And then there were facets. Uh, so still from e-commerce, uh, you needed, uh, yeah, like you search, and then you also need to have these things on the left that are facets. And you need term facets, range facets, other like categories and hierarchy of facets and so on. And this, like these Im improved. And this was, this was a, a, a major use case of Apache Lucene. Uh, in, it became a major use case. So a new structure needed to appear because actually in order to do this, the facets here, we actually have to uninvert the inverted index. Uh, we have to bring it to memory and uninvert it in order to create all these, all these structures here. So uh, a new structure was were introduced, which is the doc values. So the doc values actually allowed uh, Lucene to become a, a columnar store. store. So um, there are databases that are uh, like columnar stores that, are, that store data by field. And actually, this is what Lucene did uh, for integers and, uh, and also for, uh, for text fields that were used in facets. And this allowed, of course, uh, uh, more uh, like an increase in performance again, okay? And again, doc, doc values, a new structure that's stored in the index, so the index became even bigger, but that's not an issue. The focus is on, is on the, on the uh, performance. Um, yes, this was Lucene 4.0. And then we also had, uh, the need for, um, so this feature actually came in, in kind of in the same time as, as, the, as the dog values, because it, it were the dog values that allowed to, to go further. Um, we sometimes need, especially in all the e-commerce and, uh, and related uh, use cases, we need to uh, handle relations between documents. And of course, uh, you can handle relation by duplicating data, by, by uh, flattening the data. Um, but nevertheless, sometimes you need uh, to do joins, query time joins. And then, uh, yeah, these structures arrived in, in Apache Lucene that allowed to store uh, like parents and children documents in, in, the, in the index. And you kind of have two types of joins that are possible, and you have uh, two types of, uh, of storage that were introduced. Uh, and you have 
actually a very cool feature that's available with Apache Lucene that's quite fast in some use cases, and I personally didn't see it as fast in any other search engine, which is the field collapsing, which allows you to search and to deduplicate the search results based on a, on a key at search time. So for example, if you're in enterprise search and you have PDFs, documents, and Word, Excel, and all that, and you find a document in SharePoint, in an email, on disk, uh, and you search for it, it will appear three times, but the field collapsing will allow you to display the document just once to, to your users. Pretty cool. Um, then it came the need for uh, geo points. So this is also somehow the e-commerce use cases, but not, not only, because we started to see monitoring and observability and security use cases coming in, and this was also useful for that. And this is also a revolution in Apache Lucene, because it allowed searching for polygons uh, in, uh, in, the, in the index. Uh, before this, uh, searching for geo coordinates was uh, heavy, and it's again, you needed to scan all the documents and to see do they correspond to the area that I'm searching and all that. And this structure uh, that was introduced in Apache Lucene 6.0 actually made uh, Apache Lucene became probably the, the fastest uh, geo database. Yeah, so we have the, all the spatial database uh, functionalities that are available. You have geo shapes, bounding box, uh, polygons, and you even have like databases with all the polygons that you have to send to Apache Lucene in order to search for a country, for a, a region, for a city, and all that. Um, yeah, so with this, we kind of see the new use cases for Apache Lucene that, act that actually made the uh, success of, of Elastic, uh, which are all the monitoring and observability use cases, all the, all the big data use cases that, that arrived. And so, yeah, doc values uh, that allowed aggregation, aggregations, very fast aggregations, uh, geo capabilities. Uh, and yes, this use case is actually like 80, if not more, 90% of, of elastic use cases and of, of uh, Apache Lucene use cases. So we started with search and we ended with uh, like a platform for data analysis. And if you look at the nice t shirts that OpenSearch have here, uh, it's search but also a lot of observability, security analytics, and machine learning, we will get to that. So, uh, as I said, the observability, monitoring, logging allowed Elastic, with the help of Kibana also, to like take away. And uh, yeah, we had a lot of, uh, a lot of improvement, a lot of like, uh, traction for Apache Lucene, driven by these, these new, new use cases. Um, yeah, so we arrived to, like, a few years ago. We had a, some kind of paradigm shift uh, with the, all the NLP and, and semantic search that we started to see and to need. Um, so we realized that the search was fine, the lex lexical search was fine, but the search was kind of like left behind because of all these uh, uh, monitoring and, uh, and um, observability use cases. And we needed to like keep up uh, with, uh, with Apache Lucene because yeah, users uh, no longer search for keywords, they search for answers. Uh, they search differently, they have uh, like uh, questions that they ask, 
So we needed to add what we call um, vector search. So uh, Apache Lucene introduced support for vectors. And I will not go into this. Uh, I will go really quickly, because I, I, I guess you all know how vectors by now, how vectors are stored and how they work. Uh, you have seen a lot of presentations uh, at Buzzwords uh, even this year around this. So vectors actually introduce the ability to be multimodal. Uh, and not only that, but also to add semantic to the, to the searches. So in this example, which is taken from, from Elastic again, we see the multimodal capabilities. We have images here that can actually get stored in the, in the vector space. And yeah, so how, how, the, how the vectors work? Uh, we actually have uh, images, text, or videos, no matter what, that are categorized uh, via a lot of dimensions, hundreds if, or thousands of dimensions. In these examples, we have, we example, we have only three dimensions. That's just to be able to visualize this. And we just like calculate numbers according to every dimension. So this is the machine learning model that will do that. So in this example, we have three dimensions. And for example, the, the dimension that's called size, uh, for a cat, it's 0 0.25, and for an elephant, it's 0 0.90. Numbers that make sense, and when we place them into the vector space model, uh, into the vector space, it, it gives something like this. So, as I said, this allowed multi-model uh, search, and it's supported into Apache Lucene. We first had some kind of brute force approach that um, was like we search all the documents that are close to the document that we are uh, sending to Apache Lucene, but starting with Lucene 9.2, we have this new approach, which is called Approximate KNN, which allowed, again, uh, a lot of improvements in performance. And then we had filters that appeared, because we said, hey, uh, we can search with vectors, but we can like also use filters, and we added support for hybrid search. And this is very powerful because you can combine both of the, of the words. So you can combine lexical and, and, and uh, semantic search. And you also have support for sparse vectors, which is uh, something that's maybe not specific to Apache Lucene because you could implement it, uh, you can implement it with, uh, with more, more technologies, but it's something that's supported since like a long time because we have term vectors there. And sparse vectors, I won't get into this, but it's something like this. It's exactly like the FST trees work. You have a word which is expanded into a lot of other words that are stored in the index. And you have seen yesterday a presentation from uh, uh, op the open search guys that, uh, that presented uh, how uh, sparse vectors work really, really powerful. And again, Apache Lucene allows to do that. I encourage you to see, uh, to see this, uh, this demo. Uh, it's actually presenting how this structure works work and how they are stored into, into the index. Yeah, and then uh, ChatGPT arrived. Um, how many of you are using ChatGPT instead of a search engine? I mean, instead of Google and Bing. OK, so yeah, this is the end of search engines. <laughs> so no longer, we no longer need, we need LLMs. We don't need Apache Lucene anymore. Well, um, actually, uh, this is um, the evolution of search engines from this very powerful with uh, uh, like personalization and all that. So I have uh, a great relevance in the beginning to this. So this is the new Bing, uh, which is no longer a search engine, it's a chatbot powered by, by, by ChatGPT. So yeah, was this the end of, uh, of Apache Lucene? Well, actually, um, not really. And I just wanted to do a parenthesis 
of how do we got there. This is a, a picture from Haystack on Tour Paris where we talked about question answering. And it was just a week before ChatGPT was, was released. And we said, yeah, question answering is the future of search because people look for answers and not links to the answers. And yeah, you have like Bing that introduced also the question answering and uh, they also did the mitigation there. Uh, not, not that just I'm feeling lucky stuff which, with where I take the first answer, but they took the five most meaningful answers to do a, a mitigation. Uh, but yeah. Um, so we kind of uh, arrived, arrived there via question answering. This is an, uh, another talk that was held at Buzzwords in 2019 that talked about uh, question answering also. And actually, I, I placed it here because we use the technology that today is no longer supported. So Google's like stopped. It's technology that was like really trendy in 2019 and it's no longer here. So yeah, speaking about the Apache Lucene. Now, uh, if we come back to the LLMs and to ChatGPT and to why we still need Apache Lucene here is because of this. LLMs have a lot of flows there. They have no real-time knowledge. They have no knowledge in a specific area. And you also have hallucinations and the fact that the sources are not proven. Okay, so no real-time knowledge. If you ask ChatGPT what happened the September 8th, 2022, it will not be able to respond. Uh, if you ask also about a specific thing that happened that, that's available into a specific domain, uh, there's no knowledge about that. And hallucinations, of course, and also the fact that the answer that ChatGPT gives you or the LLM gives you, it's not really uh, like, um, you cannot really uh, validate it with a, with a valid da data source. So we end it with this use case here, which is the retrieval augmented generation. You have seen a lot of talks in Berlin Buzzwords around this, which actually makes use of a vector database. And guess what? Apache Lucene is a vector database. Yeah. Um, I will go quickly around this because, yeah, you have seen a lot of uh, uh, RAG talks uh, on, in, in this conference. Uh, but we'll like end with this one, which you see here. So Apache Lucene is still needed just to enhance LLMs and to enhance uh, like uh, large, large, large language model and technologies like, like ChatGPT. So you still have the search engine that still goes to LLMs but you still need your business data and all the missing knowledge that, that the LLM doesn't have and all the, um, like the, the validation factor that, that the vector database brings into, the, into this RAG ar architecture. So yeah, Apache Lucene is here to stay. Uh, you have a new version that was released uh, like a few days ago. Uh, less than a week ago, and same old story, a lot of memory improvements, like Lucene is using less memory to do the same thing or more, a lot of uh, improvements on the hardware, so using more threads and all that. You have seen yesterday a talk on CUDA here, where uh, NVIDIA tries to take advantage of GPUs in order to accelerate vector indexing and searching in, in Apache Lucene. So a lot of performance improvements also, and uh, a lot of vectors that, that come there, uh, a lot of features on vectors. And this is a, just a screenshot. The, the last improvement that you see there is the one that's, that's in the um, bottom of the screen, the GL one, the GL tag, uh, which actually like, improved the performance of Apache Lucene like, a lot. Yeah. So we have, haven't seen this since uh, 2020. Uh, this is not yet available in 9.11.0, uh, in, uh, but uh, yeah, it will be there soon. So yeah, Apache Lucene, go ahead and try it, and thank you. <laughs>